Hey there, Mr. Kern here. Today we're looking at the weather lesson 16. Um, you may or may not have this worksheet with you. Lesson 16, back of it has those little pictures. Um, what we're going to do is talk about kind of things you should get out of the worksheet. Uh, look over a thing similar to the back. I'm not going to go over the exact same problems, but if I had a whole set of containers of different gases that are kind of like the ones you have, can we answer the same questions about them? So by answering those questions, you know what the questions are looking for, so you can do it correctly on your own on the worksheet. <clears throat> so we're looking at molecules, volume, and pressure. Um, temperature on this is pretty much constant uh, on, on the situations we're looking at. The big thing is number density. Number density, in other words, just how packed together the stuff is. That's what we realize is the density part. Instead of talking about how packed the mass is, we're talking about just how many things you have. We have a whole bunch of dots of gas, a whole bunch of molecules in a container compared to very few. This one has a small container and not many dots. So this one actually might have the same density as that one over there. Could be the same thing. We would just have to figure out the number density, that's the number of moles divided by the volume. That's all it is. Just find those numbers, plug them in, that's how you calculate it. Um, really, instead of molecules, for the most part, we're going to end up talking about moles because that number is easier for us to work with instead of the crazy 6.022 thing. Um, but we don't have to really work with the 6.022 that much uh, on this video. So first off, just looking at the, the table, um, just analyzing that. Things they start you off with is temperature is 273 Kelvin, it's going to stay. This is the standard temperature. So if you have 273 Kelvin on all of these, but then you have one atmosphere here, that means this is at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So we already know from Avogadro's law, if I have one mole of gas at STP, so one atmosphere, 273, the volume would be 22.4 liters, and that's what this shows. Uh, we also have, let's see, so you're at sea level, so let's say that's sea level. Um, you're up on top of a mountain, you're up landing in, in an airplane, and so as you go up higher and higher and higher, your atmospheres go down. You have less pressure on top of you. So what we're looking at is if I have half the pressure, pressure is kind of related to the moles over the volume. If you just took moles over volume, that doesn't equal pressure. There's that K that's in there, but the idea is they're proportional. So if I have the same volume, but my pressure goes down to make this all equal, the number of moles has to go down too. So let's say my pressure here basically equal to one mole over 22.4. My pressure here is half as much, so that's going to have to be half a mole over 22.4. Now again, there's a K, there's some constant that we're supposed to put right here. Because 1 divided by 22.4 isn't really one atmosphere. But the idea is if one of these things goes down on this side, it has to also go down on this side. So really the trend here, the pattern you're looking for, on every one of these, you're dividing by 2. If the pressure goes down by a half, the moles have to go down by a half. So that'll help you fill out some of the rest of that table. Uh, as far as going top to bottom, if one mole at STP takes up 22.4 liters, what if I have twice the volume? 22.4 times 2, well, so how many molecules of gas must I have if I double the volume? So if you want to make a balloon twice as big, you blow twice as much air into it. So it has to be 2.0 moles. Why did I put 2.0 instead of just 2? Well, if this is 1.0 with that level of precision, I should keep it. Actually, they have 2 after the decimal, so it should be 2.00. That's 
what those should look like. Alright, so uh, looking for patterns, again, basically things are going to increase or decrease by a factor of two. They're all going to go up and down uh, together at the same rate. So analyzing what we're looking at sea level, the box, uh, let's see. They're looking at the number density, so I'm looking at 3A, number density for the 22.4 liter thing at sea level. So which one of these is the one at sea level? Let's get rid of some of the rest of the stuff. So we can see. Alright, so the one at sea level is the one with a pressure of one atmosphere. That's what sea level is. So they just want to know on 3A, they say, what's the N over V? What's the uh, number density? So number of moles is 1. The volume is 22.4. So you calculate that up. That equals the number density. Units, though, have to still exist. Since that's moles, that's... Uh, liters, whatever number you get when you answer that, that's how many moles per liter. Moles per liter means for every liter of gas I have, I have that many moles inside. That's just the number density. If I had a high number of density, that means I have more moles in the same volume. So if you look back at our original picture, this would have a high number density this would have a low. If this is one liter and this is one liter, this one has more in, more moles inside it. Uh, they want you to compare that for um, the other samples at sea level. So the other samples, you have a half mole at 11.2 uh, liters. So see what that density is. Check it for the other two also. Uh, going on to number four, they want num the number density for each location. So the locations are the, the other ones, the top of a mountain with a half atmosphere and in an airplane. So they just want the N over V for those different places also. So you just have to look. Uh, for the first one on top of a mountain, number of moles is 0.250 divided by 11.2 liters. So calculate what that equals. That's how many moles per liter I would have at that location. That's basically what they're asking you to do on this. Now they want you to explain why the pressure is higher at sea level than on top of a mountain. I think we've kind of talked about that and this lovely illustration helps you see why. So you're explaining it. All right, so flip this over on page, or I guess on the back of it, uh, number six. They want to know how many moles of a gas would there be in a 25.0 liter box at sea level? Now, they're basing this off the original problem where the temperature is uh, 273. So they're saying it's at STP. So we have to somehow relate moles and see how it's related to the volume. Is there anywhere we work with moles and volume together and did some math with it? Let's back up. Oh, I remember taking moles and volume and dividing them. So when I did that at sea level, I got that, 22.4 moles per liter. That is also Avogadro's law. Moles per liter is 22.4. That is Avogadro's law. So that's what you're looking at here. So our triangle for figuring out Avogadro's law was in the... 2.4 was this. So, they're asking you to find how many moles. If every liter
gives you 22.4 moles. If I had two liters, it'd be twice that. If I had three liters, it'd be three times that. You're taking the volume times 22.4 moles per liter to get that. So our volume in this case is 25. You're taking that times 22.4 moles per liter. And when you do this, we haven't played with units too much yet. When you do this, you have liters on top of the, uh, I guess, as the numerator, and then you're going to multiply it where liters is on the denominator, because you're going to get your answer in moles. So you'll figure out what the answer is, but that's how many moles. I hate what this program does to my handwriting, which is already kind of bad. Liters would cancel out, leaving moles for the answer. So that's how it works. That's how you can check it and see, oh yes, I'm supposed to multiply. So liters times moles per liter, that's how many moles you would have. You can do it if I said, you have two liters. You'd be able to figure out how many moles. But for some reason when we uh, switch things around, we forget how to do it. Okay, that's part one. Part two is where we're looking at uh, basically boxes kind of like this, only these are cylinders. But it all works out pretty similarly. Um, you're working at STP, so that means the temperature equals 273 and stays constant. So as you increase and decrease volume, you also increase and decrease the number of moles in each container. Alright, so in the box is showing helium gas, how many moles does each sphere represent. So let's see, we have helium, all right, so right there. So let's see, if we have one mole, it's 20 dots. So let's see, we want to know how many moles does each sphere represent. We want to know how many moles per sphere? Let's just say dot. If we want to know how many moles per dot, that's the math we do. One mole and divided by 20 dots. So that would be, for this one, don't write this for your answer. Yours is way easier. You count up how many dots are in helium, you divide it to figure it out, which is a lot easier for you. But that would be 0 0.05. Every dot equals 0 0.05 moles of helium in this case. So count stuff up, divide it out, it's real easy for your problems. Number two. Oh, I guess let's say helium, you notice, helium is just a dot because helium is a noble gas. It doesn't need anything else to join with. So helium is just helium. Oxygen is two oxygens that are double bonded, as you see there. They need that to happen to make a molecule. These aren't really molecules. Oxygen, CO2, H2, those are all molecules. Neon, also noble gas. It's just neon floating around, not connected to anything else. All right, so number two, which boxes have the most gas particles? So particles, they don't mean individual atoms. Like, each of these particles of gas floating around is made out of two things. So if I that's a bicycle if I'm like hey which of these has the most conveyances we've well, got some unicycles here you've got a bicycle you've got a tricycle so if I say which of these has the most bicycles or you know conveyances in it you can just count up like oh that's how many it has so just because this has two particles inside it doesn't mean that each of these count in this case. Okay, so in this question, it's just how many overall molecules? They just can't say molecules because then that doesn't include helium or neon. All right, so if we're looking at the most gas particles, it's kind of like looking at uh, basically how many moles. This one has 0.25 moles, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25
0.5 and 1. So it's kind of what you're looking at is all. So which box or boxes have the most gas particles? Um, this guy. That's that's all. Second most, these guys are tied for most gas particles. This one has half a mole, this one has half a mole. Okay, so they tell you how many moles are in each of these boxes every time. Number three, which boxes have the most total atoms? So this is one mole, each of them is made up of one atom. So one mole of atoms, that's just one. This is half a mole, each one is made up of two atoms. So how many total atoms? That's going to be one mole of atoms. I don't have a mole of gas, I have a mole of atoms. This is half a mole, each of them is made out of three atoms. So that's going to be one and a half moles of atoms. Um, times one, times two, so that would be a half. So it ends up this guy, the CO2. For my problem, it may not be the same for yours. This has one and a half moles of atoms. Like if I said it has one and a half dozen atoms, you're like, oh, okay, it's one and a half times twelve. One and a half moles of atoms, if you want to count them all up, it's one and a half times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what it would be told. All right, there are twice as many total atoms in box three as in box four, which for us that's not the case, so let's compare... Uh, <laughs> Let's compare those. Alright, yeah, so let's just look at, you know, maybe these guys. Twice as many atoms, but they have the same pressure. So, like we said, we're at STP. So the pressure equals one atmosphere. So, twice as many atoms in each box, but they have the same pressure. Why would it have the same pressure? As far as atoms go, there's kind of the trade-off between how many molecules, but also the volume. If you're comparing these volumes, in my problem, these volumes are quite a bit different. So, they could both have the same pressure and be different volumes, because they have different numbers of moles. So, again, there's a trade-off between the pressure and some constant value the number of molecules and the volume. So if one of these goes up or down, the pressure might go up or down, but these guys can go up and down proportionally and still be okay. So really you just have to you know, look at the explanation compared to box three and four of why they would be able to have the same pressure. Pressure is related to the number density, how many molecules per volume. Number five, the mass is important. In box three and four, are different. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So let's look at these. We have half a mole of each of these. Half a mole. That's like the same thing. But what if I said you have half a dozen donuts and half a dozen tires? They're even the same shape. We know donuts and tires are made out of different things. CO two is made out of a C and two O's. Oxygen is just made out of two O's. So every one of these that I have has an extra carbon compared to every one of these. And that's the big difference. Okay. Oh, I guess these would be the tires and these would be the donuts. So just because I have the same number doesn't mean they all weigh the same. That's the idea. For number six, describe uh, or sketch a box containing four grams of helium atoms at one atmosphere of pressure. So you have two boxes with helium on, on your sheet, uh, a little one and a big one. The big thing with helium is, and I don't know if it's clear enough, if you look on the periodic table, this is what it says for helium. Helium is four, well, it just has the four, but it's four grams per mole. If I have eight grams, each of these moles is four grams, that must mean I have two moles. So they describe the pressure, which is still the same as in those previous boxes. So 
they just want you to draw a box or describe a box if it has two moles of helium instead of the ones they already have, which are half a mole and one and a half moles. So explain what the volume would do too. Because again, if the pressure is the same, the number density has to be the same. So you have two moles over a certain amount of pressure or over a certain volume is still going to be equal to what it was before. So a half mole took up 11.2 liters, think about what a full mole would take up. And flip the thing over, you did things kind of similar to this up here. So if you had two moles, where would that go? Think about that.